The shutdown over the border wall continues, but how do Americans across the country actually feel about it? The American Psychological Association has come out against what they call toxic masculinity. And of course, as we've followed with the recent commercial, Gillette suddenly gets woke. And I have a special report on a CNN reporter who got really embarrassed when she interviewed my friend David Webb. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. God bless the United States of America. All right, we start with President Trump. He's continuing to try to negotiate with the Democrats. He wants a solution to the border wall and to border security. He invited congressional leaders on both sides of the aisle to the White House again, and the Democrats completely rejected the offer. Not a single Democrat showed up. Uh, here's a report from The Hill. It says Trump has invited several moderate House Democrats to the White House in an effort to undermine Speaker Nas. C. Pelosi, who has refused to grant Trump his demand for $5.7 billion in wall funding, but the group turned down the invitation. Today, the president offered both Democrats and Republicans a chance to meet for lunch at the White House. Unfortunately, no Democrats will attend, White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders said in a statement. A group of nine House Republicans will meet with the president, but Sanders said it's time for Democrats to come to the table and make a deal. So this was from The Hill. And so you have to take you have to understand their wording. Sending a message out to Democrats and Republicans to meet is not a way or a means to undermine Nancy Pelosi. It's a way to try and get things done. The only way they're going to get something done on this situation is for them to negotiate, is for Democrats and Republicans to come together and strike a deal that funds the border wall and adds security enhancements, technology, uh, Border Patrol agents, the, the whole works. That's what's going to get this done. In the meantime, Republicans are standing behind the president. They, they don't want him to necessarily do the national emergency option, but they definitely have it on the table. Here's what Lindsey Graham said in a recent tweet. Uh, he said, Mr. President, you're right to continue the fight for border security, including a wall barrier that Democrats have supported in the past. No wall, no deal. Use emergency powers as a last resort. Here's what Trump had to say. This should be the easiest deal that I've ever seen. We're talking about border security. Who can be against it? We're talking about drugs pouring in, human traffickers tying up women, putting tape in their mouth, and pouring into our country. We can't have that. We can't have that. We have drugs, we have criminals, we have gangs, and the Democrats don't want to do anything about it. They say, oh, it's immoral. But it wasn't immoral three years ago, five years ago, six years ago, and 10 years ago when they all raised their hands to approve a wall. All of a sudden, it's immoral. So Trump, in, in his comments right there, he brings up a great point, and it's a talking point that the Democrats are trying to use now, and that it's immoral to have this wall. Somehow, even though they support it in the past, now it's immoral to do it. But what do the American people think? So it's a good time to, to look at some polling, look at some, some data, and just see exactly what's going on since this border shutdown, this a government shutdown, has lasted for a while. So Rasmussen reports just uh, over the weekend and into this week has released some new data, new surveys, and here's what he had to say. So given the option of what's better for the country, 53% say it's better to tightly control who comes into the country. 39% say it's better to open our borders to anyone who wants to come here as long as they are not a terrorist or a criminal. Rasmussen asked, also asked a follow-up question. Is it immoral for the United States to build a wall on the southern border to help stop illegal immigration? Yes, 40%. No, 53%. So there you have it. There's where Trump is. is he really has the American people on his side on this issue, which gives him even more leverage. Not only is the Republican caucus mostly behind him, really solidly behind him, but he also has the American people. Uh, here's what else Rasmussen said in a separate survey also conducted just this past week. He said, how big is the immigration problem today? 45% said it's very serious. 22% somewhat serious. 25% not very serious. And second question, is the government doing too much or too little to stop illegal immigration or is the level of action about right? 28% say too much, 48%, 20 points higher say too little. So that's, that's where things stand as far as the 
attitudes or kind of the the ideas, the will of the American people. Trump has it has them behind him. So what's the end game? What's going to happen right now? There's there's been no budging on either side, and so how is it all going to play out? Of course, the option that you've heard about is for Trump to c- declare a national emergency. That way, he can use other funds from the Pentagon to fund and construct, start constructing the border wall. Uh, that's an option. I don't think he should go that route, and I don't think it'll come to that. The the whole thing that that people need to realize is these 800,000 or so federal workers that aren't getting you know, their paychecks right now, even though Trump said he'd, they'd get them in the future, they are a big, big Democrat constituency. A lot of these federal workers belong to federal unions, and the unions have an ally in the Democrats. That means when they pick up the phone to call and try and get legislation done, they're not calling Republicans, they're calling Democrats. So the longer this draws out, as long as Trump and the Republicans stay solid, the Democrats will eventually feel the pressure from their own base. The unions are going to hear from their employees, and the Democrats are going to hear from the unions. And I think as long as we keep it up, what's failed in the past, as far as these government shutdowns that always seem to be blamed on the president and the Republicans, is that you never, ever had unity and leadership among the Republican caucus. Now you have a leader that says, we're going to get the wall done. The government will shut, stay shut down as long as possible. And you have Republicans standing behind him. So that is just a situation that we haven't had in recent memory for government shutdowns. The media is always against us. Democrats are always going to try to play this to their advantage. But we have a strong, strong coalition. And we have a leader that says, Border security, border walls have been asked for in the past. They've always been shut down, rejected by the Democrats, even though they say they support them. Now we have a president who's willing to get it done, and all of a sudden the Democrats are opposing him. And this government shutdown, the government needs to stay shut down until we can get the border wall funded. All right, next we're going to talk about a, a topic that's that's really gaining a lot of steam, and that is uh, American Psychological Association has come out with these new guidelines for men and boys. And as, as we've seen with climate change or gender studies or now masculinity, so much of science, so much of the scientific approach, gathering data, coming to conclusions, is being replaced by ideology. And it's really sad to see that the left is taking over what should be serious scientific organizations and associations and pushing an agenda rather than the facts. And when it comes to masculinity, there's centuries, eons, millennium of history to show that men and women are different. It's biological. It's psychological. It's not a social construct as the left wants to say. So here are some of the the tidbits from this report from the American Psychological Society or Association. First, they do get into some stats that kind of show the sad state of men in this country. Uh, Men commit 90% of homicides in the United States and represent 77% of all homicide victims. They're the demographic group most at risk of being victimized by violent crime they are 3.5 times more likely than women to die by suicide, and their life expectancy is 4.9 years shorter than women's. Boys are far more likely to be diagnosed with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder than girls, and they face harsher punishments in school. So, but that's, that's about the end of the science. Uh, the report goes on to make these, these claims, so just, just follow along here. Traditional masculinity, marked by stoicism, Stoicism, competitiveness, dominance, and aggression is, on the whole, harmful. So Let that soak in. Men socialized in this way are less likely to engage in healthy behaviors when the rules of manliness bump up against issues of race, class, and sexuality that can further complicate men's lives. Boys and men who identify as gay, bisexual, transgender still face higher-than-average levels of hostility and pressure to conform to masculine norms. Now, this, pr- this report has been blasted by common sense, rational thinking people, but that didn't stop Gillette from jumping into this. Instead of just making razors like they should, 
they tried to they have now jumped into this whole debate on toxic masculinity and let me just show you a little bit of their uh, latest commercial bullying the me too movement against sexual toxic harassment masculinity is this the best a man can get is it We can't hide from it. Sexual harassment is taking over. It's been going on far too long. So not only do they mention toxic masculinity, but there, there's a couple things that, that really rub me the wrong way in this. One is their use and depiction of the boys will be boys phrase. And the other is this notion that where they actually say some men are doing okay with standing up to in support of women. Some men. Um, first, the boys will be boys. As long as I've been alive, it's never been acceptable to bully. It's never been acceptable to abuse women. It's never been acceptable to act like a loser. These aren't just concepts that have all of a sudden come around in the American psyche. These have always been bad behaviors, and it does not define who a man is. And for Gillette to say that some men are doing okay implies that most men aren't. Most men are giving in to these behaviors that are so, so bad, and it's absolutely, positively insane. And it really drives me crazy because you can see the overall agenda of the left. It's not to get men to act civilized. Most of them do. You know, the, the traits, the characteristics that make men men, leadership and strength and stamina and courage and a sense of adventure are the traits that build societies and the left's I, i'm positive the left's ultimate goal is the destruction of society because if you go after men if you go after fathers and destroy fathers you destroy the family and if you destroy the family you destroy society and if you destroy society all that's left is this all-powerful government that says follow me i'll take care of you and we've got to put a stop to it. It, it, just, it just can't go on. Uh, finally, I want to leave with a, a little bit of, of humor. Recently, CNN uh, legal analyst Ariva Martin interviewed a friend of mine, David Webb, on her show. And um, I've been on David's serious uh, XM political show a number of times, including some election coverage a couple of years ago. He's a great guy. And, uh, but here's how the interview went down. She said, David said, I've chosen a different path parts of the media world, done the work so that I'm qualified to be in each one. I've never considered my color the issue. I considered my qualifications the issue, Webb said. That's a whole another long conversation about white privilege, the things that you have the privilege of doing that people of color don't have the privilege of, said Martin, who also hosts CBS's Face the Truth. A dumbfounded Webb asked, how do I have pri the privilege of white privilege? Martin responded, David, by virtue of being a white male, you have white privilege. Well, uh, sorry, but this is David Webb. So, so uh, C CNN needs to do a little bit of background and know everyone should over at CNN should know this guy. And it's just idiotic that they would call David Webb, who's black, a, a perpetrator of white privilege. So... Think about that uh, as you go along with the rest of your day, just how crazy and ridiculous CNN is. All right, that's it for now. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour.